Welcome to a new vlog and today it's another thermal camera review and this is the Top Don TC002 and it has a lightning connector, works with iOS devices. They also have a TC001 which is identical but for Android with USB Type-C and there's also a TC004 which is like a standalone unit with a 2.8 inch display and this is just among other products in their offer. I've seen some comments on my previous review videos for similar thermal cameras that it's not really a good idea to buy an accessory like this camera with a lightning connector because Apple is going to remove the lightning connector this year and you'll be left stranded. Well, let me share a few thoughts on why I don't necessarily agree with that idea. First, people have been saying that Apple is going to remove the lightning connector for the past four or five years or so. And did they remove it? No. So you should never purchase something on a promise of a future edition of a uh, feature. And I think the same can be said about removal of a feature because you don't know when and if that is going to happen. No, I'm not saying it's not going to happen this year. It's, I'm just saying that we have no certainty. The second thought is that even if Apple removes the lightning connector on its next device releasing this fall, you probably still have a lightning connector iPhone and most people will probably still have it for at least a couple of years more and it will continue to be perfectly usable. But let me know if you guys have a different opinion. I would love to hear about it in the comments below. So the Top Don TC002 was sent in for free for the purpose of this review from Top Don directly and I said why not take a look at a different implementation of the infrared uh, thermal sensor and how do I know it's an infrared thermal sensor? Well for a start it's the same resolution of 256 by 192 and it's also the same temperature range, features look similar, there are only a handful of thermal imaging sensor manufacturers so I'm pretty sure that the sensor inside this camera is also infrared. But infrared supplies uh, just a framework and it's up to the individual OEMs to provide a functional package for the user. And depending on their resources, they can come up with a better app, for example, that enhances the sensor capability. Uh, but before I continue with the review, let me quickly mention the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, which is celebrating their 9th anniversary and they are currently offering various discount coupons and gifts if you place your order now. For example, you can get up to 50% discount on your 3D printing order or you can also apply for a sponsorship if you're building a non-profit project. Check out their website, link below. Inside the package, we are greeted with the site of the protective case. Thumbs up for that as uh, some cameras or test instruments from other manufacturers do not include this EVA protective case. And inside the, the case we uh, have this uh, lightning extension cable which is uh, braided and feels like high quality but it's kind of stiff and thick and I like my USB cables to be a bit more flexible. Uh, we also get a lint free cleaning cloth and the uh, camera itself in uh, the uh, special cutout. Find on the App Store, it is installed in just a few seconds and upon connecting the camera it is detected in the upper right corner. I selected the first option thermal imaging and it starts in the iron color palette which is my favorite. Uh, min max temperatures as well as target crosshair temperatures are displayed by default. When used in the direct attachment mode, meaning plugged directly into the phone, the camera design and app view is generally intended for portrait mode usage. And you can flip the phone landscape, but it doesn't do any auto detection, doesn't change the layout of the app. So this will become uh, important later when we test the different options and views in the app. The capture picture or video controls are on the bottom left and I find it interesting how they implemented the video recording. It's actually doing a screen capture, uh, which is strange and I learned about that because uh, it needs to request permission from the phone to do it. I haven't seen this done before. It's, it's a capture of just the camera view section from within the app, but it makes me wonder what will happen if there is some you know, operating system pop-up message on screen. Will that be captured too? And another, another thing is that if I try to do a um, native screen capturing uh, from within the uh, iOS uh, device, and then I try to turn on video recording in the top-down app, it will automatically stop my native uh, screen recording and start recording it in the app. So I don't know, I 
can't necessarily name a specific scenario where that would bother me, uh, but maybe there is some kind of uh, use case where that would be a problem. Hitting the three dot button gives you access to the manual calibration shutter function, turning on or off audio recording and a timer, uh, which I presume is used for capturing the images. Next option on the toolbar is the crosshair button and gives you access to the different measurements that are now um, that we are by now used to seeing on these cameras. We get dot measurements, we get line measurements, uh, rectangle measurements, and a full image with um, full image mode. It just does auto detection of min max over the whole image. The next option gives you access to some picture settings, and this is where things start to get interesting. You can turn on what initially looks like a picture-in-picture -picture option, but this is something better. You can actually zoom and reposition the phone camera image, you can align it over the thermal image, and you can set its transparency. So this effectively gives you the option to mix both the re real image and the thermal image and have them perfectly uh, overimposed. And this is an awesome function which you don't get on other cameras made by um, other companies, even though they are based on the same sensor and likely the same SDK from Infiray. And granted, there is some manual work in, you know, you have to adjust the image, uh, but this is like functionality for multi-thousand dollar infrared camera. The next option is the uh, image mode adjustments, and there are plenty of modes to choose from, but once again, I prefer the iron mode. I don't see why you would use anything else. Maybe black and white could make sense, but all the other modes are just a gimmick if you ask me. Next we have some image settings and we can disable the color bar at the right side of the screen. We can adjust contrast and brightness, but again, default settings seem to work very nicely. And the last button in here does the range selection. So the default is minus 20 to plus 150 degrees Celsius. And most measurements will be done in this mode. Uh, once again, we notice that behavior, which is present on all infrared sensors. When we switch between ranges, there is lots of noise and there's multiple shutter calibration routines performed by the camera to trim that noise down which it eventually does there's also this temperature monitoring mode so if we go back into this um, option we can choose what type of measurement we want we want a point line or zone measurements and um, imagine you are placing this on a tripod you know just to have it stable and monitoring uh, some object now you get this live graphing of the min max values uh, from the type of measurements that you, that you selected and this can be very useful not something you find on other cameras you can zoom in or out on the recording graph and you can check out the measurements at any given point and if you go back it's not very obvious but uh, it also gives you the ability to search for previous recordings and visualize them so this is like a really nice and useful feature for data log. Unfortunately, I don't see an option for exporting this data as a CSV. Uh, that would have been nice to have. So all you get is uh, the option to visualize it in this app. So this is more of a general use thermal camera. You can inspect HVAC systems to check out for potential leaks, hot or cold zones. You can look at electrical panels to inspect for hot spots generated by maybe weak connections with increased resistance. You can do general purpose temperature monitoring of uh, various objects as long as they are not reflective. You can do some construction work inspection to see if uh, you know maybe the, the windows are perfectly sealed. So lots of uh, lots of general purpose usage uh, that you can get out of this uh, camera. But can you use something like this for electronics or PCB inspection? Well, not really. Let me show you why. It, this was not designed for that purpose. So here is the same FPGA board that I used to test other thermal cameras and we cannot see any uh, important details. We can get a general idea of where hotspots might be on this PCB, but certainly we cannot zoom in on individual component level to pinpoint a potential problem. The lens built into this camera is adjusted for general purpose usage uh, starting from you know at least 30 centimeters of distance from the measurement point so if you're looking for some pcb inspection thermal camera this is not the right model for you check out my other videos where i look at other other cameras which have either a fixed or an adjustable macro lens that provide much more details but as a general purpose inspection thermal camera this is great and it's a much nicer package than uh, other cameras uh, I've seen because if you go for this you would be getting the same high resolution infrared sensors as uh, other cameras uh, but you would also be uh, getting you know the included EVA carry case you get better software with nicer functionality going for this um, iOS lightning connector version 
makes sense if you only plan to use this with an iOS device because if you also plan to use it on a PC then it makes more sense to get the USB Type-C version which uh, would allow you to connect to both an Android device and a PC with the accompanying uh, software which they offer for download on their website. So then this uh, would be doubling as um, you know a PC connected uh, thermal camera uh, which comes with some advantages maybe you can do some data logging from that app I don't know I haven't checked it out. And by the way, if you're looking to order one of these, uh, there are links um, from Amazon in the description below. And this pretty much concludes my review of uh, this camera. It's a great little package and definitely worth considering this added to your short list of options. It seems like different manufacturers try to aim for different end customers by adding or removing specific features from their product, all based on the same sensor which is great because in the end you might find exactly what you need without you know compromising on resolution or refresh rate uh, or stuff like that and if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to support me making more videos like this one you can do it on my patreon with as little as one dollar per month thank you for watching and i'll be seeing you next time